Consulting team and welcome to our KWGM Wealth Mastermind, where today we're going to be having a conversation with one of our uh, most wealth-focused agents, a guy named John Murchison. John, uh, excited to have you on the call. I know you had a very long day yesterday, so this is timely. You got a lot of fresh things in your mind uh, as a result for uh, from from your time yesterday with Gene Rivers. So why don't we just start uh, before we dive into uh, pulling apart some some of your key takeaways over the next 20, 25 minutes with uh, with Gene Rivers and the MREI. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Oh, uh, well, what do you want to know? Uh, well, obviously, my name is John Murchison. Um, let's see, I'm a father. You know, I have a family, wife, kids, uh, four children and a granddaughter. Um, been in real estate with Keller Williams. Now I'm in my 10th year with Keller Williams. Um, was first actually licensed in real estate back in 2004. Um, so... You know, I've seen where the market was uh, was good, and then I've seen the plummet in the business to the time where I actually, you know, had a period of where I was out of the business and then got back into the business and came to this great company of Keller Williams, uh, which was, in my opinion, an awesome decision to make. Um, hey, it's an awesome decision, in my opinion, too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, you know, now, you know, in my 10th year with Keller Williams, you know, I have a few things that are actually, you know, moving in the in the right directions. Um, I've been through the hustle and bustle of the business, the ups and downs. Uh, and now I'm at a position where I am moving forward and venturing into some different things in different areas of real estate, um, learning to invest and doing some investing myself. Uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then also uh, business has been picking up and, um, you know, looking to establish a team here in the near future. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me, you know, and obviously I'm always an individual that wants to help others and see others do well as, you know, also, and, um, you know, looking to gain as much knowledge as I possibly can and actually implement it for myself as well. Well, we we love that, and certainly know that we take advantage of you as a as a as a trainer, and also as a you know, somebody who's just willing to pitch in and and help out um, like you are today. So uh, yesterday, you participated in a virtual training that Keller Williams University put on um, around the what we call the Blue Book, uh, which is the Millionaire Real Estate Investor, not to be confused with the Red Book which is the millionaire real estate agent. So tell us, uh, I mean, that was a day long class, right? You were, you were in the Zoom for seven and a half hours. Uh, mm -hmm. Help me understand, um, one, you currently have investment properties, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and for you as an ex what we would call an experienced investor, good investment of time for you? I don't know that I would consider myself a fully experienced investor. I'm, I'm still a very beginning investor myself. Um, you know, I've been following a couple models of, you know, coaching and things like that and getting into some investments. And um, mm -hmm. I did, I, I, bought, I bought my first property actually last year, um, you know, have attended in the property, uh, creating some cash flow, which is a good thing. And, um, you know, over this next few years, my goal is to actually acquire another, within this next year, is to acquire another three to four properties. So yesterday's conversation was incredibly timely for you then? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So let's, uh, let's dive in and start talking takeaways. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you've got a lot after a full, a full day like that, but um, give me the biggest aha Right off the bat, um, you know what are you what are you doing differently today that you weren't to, that you weren't yesterday? Thanks to this uh, thanks to this opportunity. Okay, so one one of the biggest ahas that I really got out of that is that um, I feel like I'm a little bit behind the uh, the a ball with investing. Okay. 
um, you know, investing is one of the things that you want to start doing much sooner than later. Um, reason why is because, you know, investing is the way that you're actually going to build wealth. You mm -hmm. know, we're in a business where, you know, there's a lot of hustling and bustling. We can make some really good money in this business. But um, if you're not, if you're in real estate and you're not investing in properties for yourself and getting investments for yourself set up, then you're going to be constantly in the cycle or, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, I say the rat race, you yeah. know, meaning that, you know, that wheel is constantly spinning where you're out, you're going to go, you're going to make the money, but just as you make the money, you're going to be spending the money and then you don't have it. You know, all you're doing is paying bills, you're doing this regular daily life and you haven't established anything for yourself in the long run. Uh, so the biggest, the biggest take for me was when he was saying, um, I have a daughter who's going into the 12th grade, which is mind blowing to me right now. Wow. Uh, <laughs> going into the 12th grade next year. And when you think about college, college is just a year away for me. You know, I mean, I've been there already, you know, with my oldest daughter, you know, she's been through college and things like that. You know, uh, we had to go through, help her get loans, student loans and things like that. But when you are not in the position where you have investments, being able to pay things like that, you what he said was, uh, you're setting your children up to be right, you know, just you're plugging them right into the debt cycle. And John, I think you're you're freezing up on us here, my friend. I don't know if it's you or me. John, if you, it uh, looks like you got a real bad signal, bud. If you can hear me. Yep. All right. That's how, uh, that's how bad the signal was. So I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit where John was leaving off with respect to uh, this conversation. Uh, you know, it sounds like his biggest takeaway, and based on my conversations with him last night, this morning, his biggest takeaways are around this idea, or they're around mindset. Uh, and it is uh, always, right? We're always in a position where we are, um, the first thing that we want to address is mindset, right? Understanding uh, what we want is more important than how to go get it because we can uh, make our way through any how if we have the appropriate why, right? So you take someone like John, you know, 18 years ago, if he would have invest, invested in a real estate property, uh, an investment property, then we would see him, uh, you know, 18 years later, have a cash flow and a physical asset that he could sell off to pay for his daughter's college or to use to teach his daughter about cash flow and about investing uh, as a way to potentially even make a career of real estate or, you know, there's a million different ways that you can go with it. There's an agent in this office who, uh, for uh, clients in their database, when they um, have, a, have a new bundle of joy, when they have a new baby, he sets up an appointment with them to go sit down and talk about what it would look like to invest, instead of investing in a college fund, invest in a, a rental property, have a tenant pay off the mortgage over the course of the next 18 years, and then you have a cash flowing asset that you can give them as a high school graduation present or sell to pay for college and not be subject to what uh, the state of Ohio is doing with 529 plans. So first big takeaway is uh, going to be around mindset. Like, Understand, like true, fully understand. And if you don't have a copy of the MREI, the blue book, we have them in the office available through the Leverage Center. 
then get your head, uh, get one, and then start to understand the opportunities that exist in investing for you as an individual. The sooner you start, the the sooner you can be to a point that you have, um, you know, whatever you need taken care of uh, through investing. Uh, one of the other uh, takeaways that we had discussed is, um, you know, this uh, idea of, you know, being around people who are doing what you want to do, right? So we have uh, about a hundred different agents who own investment properties or are actively supporting investors uh, through their real estate business. And so when you when you think about that, we have that conversation. Guys, you do not have to do this alone. There are, uh, I know Heidi Heidi Huffman just jumped on the call. I mean, you know, Heidi is on her third investment property within a couple of years. And I know she got help from agents in our office and would love nothing more than to help, uh, to help you uh, with your investment endeavors, okay? So when we think about that, um, you have this, uh, we have this opportunity inside of Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan that if you want to invest for cash flow, if you want to invest for appreciation, if you want to do a fractional investment with somebody else, if you want to do a flip as your investment opportunity or as your vehicle, we've got a dozen, two dozen people that are currently doing it that will, uh, that care enough to share with you about what you're doing. So second big takeaway, don't go it alone, Right. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. That's a very, very important principle in your real estate business and in your real estate investing business. And then uh, the third big takeaway that John and I were going to discuss is just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Like, oh, I can make these numbers work. I can get in there and, uh, you know, if I if I get the tenant at a a thousand and fifty bucks a month instead of a thousand bucks a month, then uh, you know it'll all work out. Like discretion is the better part of investing here, which means that you know if you're getting into the investment activity and you want to be a millionaire real estate investor, you have to invest time in looking at a lot of deals, looking at a ton of deals to find one good one. Um, you know, there's uh, stuff talked about where where it's, you know, you're talking hundreds of deals um, to find one that works, right? It is not, uh, you know, the returns that you have the opportunity to earn are going to be two and three and four times what the market, you know, what the stock market or the market, as we call it, would give you. And it's going to take more energy than just dumping a bunch of money with some guy at Charles Schwab. Right. So be prepared for that. Be prepared for the long haul in terms of your investment, which is, again, why it's so important to start with mindset, why it's so critical that you be dialed in on what you want the world to look like and how investment is going to get you there. Number two, don't go alone. Do not go it alone. You will have, uh, uh, you will go, uh, will go much further with mentorship, with support, with advice. Um, and you have that here in this company, in this community, more than uh, in anywhere else in the world. And then and then the third uh, big takeaway is, um, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? So in an environment where, um, you know, you want to get started, I promise you the first deal you look at might look good, but not quite make the numbers. And do you kind of want to do a thing that, ah, man, if I could just get, don't bend the map, right? If you consistently look for deals, you will find more deals and then you will find the deal that you want. You don't have to put yourself in a situation where your first investment's a bad investment. So you never make a second one, right? Okay, looks like we got John back on. John, I, I covered a few points, uh, but I'm going to pin you again. Um, and I know we've got uh, we, you and I both have uh, hard stops here at 11:30, so we got a we got a few uh, few minutes. I think I'm I'm looking at this group here. We got uh, maybe mostly um, 
haven't done an investment and then you know a couple that have done a few um you know again coming okay so we covered i think you were hitting on mindset and the sooner you start the sooner you get to where you want to go what a what a what would you uh what would you recommend you know hey i'm sitting here i have the means to invest what's my what's my next step like everybody in real estate tells me you should invest in real estate okay what do i do how do i do it okay so as I've learned um, over this past year, so when it comes to investing, um, you need to really be open to finding the opportunities. Um, you know, as real estate agents, we're we're really our great we're our own greatest resource because we have access to so many different properties, and we see, we know, we learn the markets, we study the markets. Um, so really we we have to learn how to find the right opportunities um yesterday was a, a real good focus um and throughout the mre uh i the millionaire real estate investor uh he focused a lot on buying and holding you know versus the flip option you know purchasing and flipping property so he focused a lot heavily on buying and holding properties yesterday to build wealth. Yep. So what you want to do is look for great opportunities that can provide you cash flow. Because like I was saying before, you know, T-Mobile strikes again. Um, we, uh, I'm in a position where it's like, you know, I want to set up things to be able to pay for other things. And I don't necessarily have to go out and work hard or have to constantly work to get it and that's the point of building wealth is that one day you want to be able to have things set up to uh to fund things where you don't necessarily have to go out and work for it um you know so what you should be looking for is looking for properties that you know should be able to give you a decent cash flow what's going to provide you a cash flow you know is it you know multi-family is it a single family um, something where you can get attended in there. Uh, he was very big on talking about doing a rent study, uh, you know, investing to find out if a property is a good investment. And uh, he didn't dive very deep, but he did say that there was eight questions that he asked to do a rent study. Okay. Um, and he he, he kind of blew through them, so I didn't get a chance to write them all down, but he you know, they, he did say that he was going to send it out to us so that we'll have the eight questions. And it was almost like, a, it, it, well, it was a script. It was a script um, which will help you to gather data. And that's what a rent study is, is you're gathering data about properties, uh, the investors in the area, um, you know, absentee owners. If you look into an area and you notice that there's a lot of absentee owners, but then that shows that it's a, it's a, it's a high rental area. Um, so you want to do that, do rent studies on properties uh, and make sure that, you know, it's a good investment. Uh, I, you know, and learning and like I said, I'm still in the very beginning stages of learning all of this myself. So I'm not the expert, but um, there was a lot of good things to take away from it. And what you should be doing is looking like you may come across opportunities where, you know, hey, man, it, and a lot of times we'll see it. And it may be a property that might be thirty, forty thousand um, dollars, and instead of us actually looking for our opportunities and where how we can acquire the properties, we're selling it. Go, we're looking for investors to buy the properties, you know, to, to buy or sell the properties too. When we need to be looking for opportunities where we can actually buy the property for ourselves, you know, we turn a lot of good deals for other individuals, but you got to start changing the focus to what's my goal here? What am I going to do? You know, how can I acquire this property? And a lot of us get stuck uh, on worrying about if we don't have the capital, or if we don't have the funds. And I was there for a very long time. I'm still there. I still struggle with it sometimes. Um, so uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have the cash right, right there. There's money out here. There's people that you can talk to. And we have to learn how to actually uh, put proposals and things together to finding the money. Um, and we that, that's probably a whole nother discussion that we should have is just learning ways to find money uh, for us to invest. You know, um, he talked about 
actually using FHA loans to start investing. The reason why is because, you know, it's a low down payment, three and a half percent of what the purchase property is yeah. and um, the purchase price is. And then actually turning that into an investment because he was like, even though they have the rule where, yes, you should be owner occupied in these properties and things. But he said, really, there's no rule of, you know, you acquiring a property and then moving out. He said, just had to be a primary residence for your first year. So there's no rule against that. So you can actually use, utilize that as a low down payment. And then you can use FHA loans more than once, uh, which was an eye opener. It was like, yeah, I never thought about it that way to acquiring it, you know, little money out of my pocket. So it's a lower down payment as opposed to having to go and put 20 and 25% down, utilize FHA to get started, you know, or, um, you know, I don't know everybody's credit situation or where you're at or anything. Uh, what, I, what I've learned from, you know, coaching was that your relationships, you know, with people can be very key. You know, a lot of us probably know a lot, you know, more than more than five people who have the means or have funds, you know, that we may be afraid to go to, you know, to ask the problem that we face is that we don't ask, you know, 100%. hey, can you help me out with this? I think that, I think, you know, in, uh, India put a question in the chat, like, you know, okay, mean, you know, hey, when you talk about means to invest, we're talking about money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you got, you know, if you don't have the money, but you have the deal, I promise you, you can find a partner. You know, that's that whole mindset of like, are you walking into every listing appointment? Are you driving down every street thinking about what would it look like? to own one of these or what it would look like if I was the buyer. And I'll bet that uh, you could uh, you could find a partner with a Facebook post. Uh, if you uh, had a good investment opportunity that penciled out well, you the amount of the number of people who have a bunch of money but aren't using it to invest. I mean, you could leverage the existing equity in your home to not put yourself in a cash poor position. There's a lot of different ways that you can uh, find money. And that's, yeah, I mean, that's a, a whole nother conversation for a whole nother time. Um, but it is like the the hardest thing, it, finding money is easy, right? Even in bad economies. Um, the hardest thing to find is the good deal, right? And so we as real estate agents need to be bloodhounds for good opportunities. And we need to be bloodhounds for good opportunities for ourselves first. Absolutely. I mean, John, you work with investors, right? I work with a ton of them. Yes. How many millions do you think you've made your investors? Man, if we if I could count over the past two years, um probably made my investors three or four million. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, it's just and again, we talked about it. It's so important the mindset shift. When are you going to start making yourself those millions, right? You deserve mm -hmm. it. You, you know, it, and, and guys, you know, John, John, John nailed it. It is uh, very much. Um, I, I, I always say realtors don't have revenue problems. They have cash flow problems, right? And that just means that we make our money in discrete lumps. Uh, and then we have periods where we don't have it. An investment portfolio if it did nothing other than protect your cash flow during the seasonably slow months, you would uh, you could you could be a better real estate agent because you would have more opportunity uh, to operate from a position of strength uh, in January, February, and March while everyone else is scrambling and scurrying and changing strategies and 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 acting from the place of pain. But. Uh, mm -hmm. John, I know, I know you got a uh, you got a hop here at eleven thirty, um, and we're at eleven thirty two. I appreciate you. Uh, when you get those notes and the follow up and the and the information from M the MREI workshop yesterday, can you send that to me? And I'll make sure that our uh, our crew here and all of Keller Williams gets a uh, gets a taste of that. Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. my man. No I'm gonna turn you loose all and right. hey. Uh, uh, let me be the first, uh, I'm sure of many to say, have a very happy anniversary. Um, you've, got, uh, you've got an incredible bride. 
And I hope you guys are able to celebrate uh, properly this weekend. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And, you know, um, hope everybody got something out of it today. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. And I uh, thank you, sir. Absolutely, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining Great. us, everybody.